This is Rating Descending, where we watch IMDb's Worst 250 so you don't have to. My name is Abigail Ward. And I'm Michelle St. Clair. And today we watched College Road Trip. When an overachieving high school student decides to travel around the country to choose the perfect college, her overprotective cop father decides to accompany her to keep her on the straight and narrow. Let's watch. Happy New Happy Year! Happy New Year! Wow. Oh, jinx! Oh my that God. was crazy. That was Welcome crazy. to 2022, where yeah. everything's still a fucking nightmare. If anything, <laughs> everything is worse. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, listeners, that we didn't post an episode last week. As we put on our Twitter, both of us were sick and isolating, and neither yeah. of us have test results yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I couldn't get tested at all. Michelle was very fortunate in getting tested. Now she just has to wait it out. Yep, yeah, it's been days. <laughs> yeah, I was certain I had COVID last week. I think I was lucky and somehow dodged it, but my whole family has it. My friends have it. Me and Claude are just isolating at home because I don't want to get sick this month. It's, it's just a fucking mess. We have a lot of American listeners who would have experienced us going like, hey, look, we don't have as many cases as you guys, but we're still in a lockdown. And now it's like, actually, our infection rate is getting close. Yeah. It's and we're not wild. in any lockdown. No. Nope. Well, New South Wales are reintroducing restrictions, and I feel like Victoria is not far behind. We'll see if that ends up turning into some sort of lockdown. They're restrictions in the American context. They are not restrictions in the context of how we have experienced the pandemic. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 100%. It's a funky start to what could be an odd year, but, but I just think- got to keep your head up for the third year in a row. Oh, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, we began and it was like, false hope, we got this, we just finished the pandemic, let's do it. And then it was like terrible and angrier and awful. This time, we're like, oh, it's the pandemic, we're right in the middle of it again. So I reckon back half of the year, burning wastes. It's going to be just going to get so much worse. (laughs) Oh, my God. It tends to. Hey, like, I mean, like every back half of the year, we've started with a lockdown. Like every end of both times at the end of winter, we get launched into another lockdown. It seems like the end of June is a very cursed time. But wouldn't that be nice? Like two is such a weird amount of years for it to happen. Two. That's weird. So you want the third time is the charm. Yeah. I reckon like one lockdown. Great. Three lockdowns, okay, there's a whole thing going on for years. Two, that's weird. That's just like bad yeah, timing. Weird. It could have just been <laughs> one big one. It's terrible. <laughs> we'll just have to see how 2022 shapes out. Yeah, maybe I'll get my wish. <laughs> Please, everybody pray. Everybody tonight, tweet in, um, and not just for the engagement, but tweet in, Michelle shall not get her way. Her wishes have been revoked. Make it a hashtag. It's really long. Make it it a hashtag. (laughs) Please wish, fairy. Take away Michelle's wishes. (laughs) (laughs) What's the law around wishes? Is it just generic, I'm wishing to the universe in general? Is it a specific thing? What's going on with wishes, huh? You mean like the the solid, like the the across the board law of wishes because i don't think there is like anything that's across the board i think wishes are so dependent on like the universe that they belong in right sounds pretty inconsistent yeah for sure oh i'm not behind i'm not supporting this i'm not an advocate for this i wish there was a much more across the board ruling as per wishes that's uh, uh, yeah re wishes consistency is is the name of my email (laughs) (laughs) Also, Email us if you too wish that there was an above the board. I love that I called the subject wishes. line of an email its name. <laughs> <laughs> I do think if we're going to start the year in any way, I want to start it with what the fans have been clamoring for. Everyone oh, yeah. has been telling me for weeks and weeks what we need is another Abby Minecraft update. Abby's Minecraft update. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I don't think you're going to be happy with my Abbey Minecraft update. I feel like this is going to be exactly what I think it's going to be. <laughs> well, once the villagers all were killed, 
I was thinking about stealing some and breeding them, but it felt really morally wrong. So I made a boat and instead of sailing to another village to take villages, I just sailed off and made a different house. What's happened with that house? So I have an ice house that I made on top of a cliff and it's really sick. I can like walk down to like this icy village, which is really pretty. Um, But I don't interact very much because I got too attached last time. So I just keep my distance. (laughs) I'm like a lone wanderer at this point. I can't go near a village. It hurt too much last time. Like I'm I'm not going to see another village get wiped out despite my best efforts. This is why I want the updates. You were went from being like i'm committed to the village i'm going to rescue them to like no i've been hurt before i'm i'm hermiting myself I'm exactly myself. i'm in my first act where someone knocks on my little ice door and they're like yeah. hey we need you to come protect this village and i'm like no i've been down that road before yeah they don't call me that anymore are you like i haven't heard that name in years and i slam the door shut and this young yeah. kid's like please we need you my mother's pregnant and we're all dying and i'm like fine one less job so i made my beautiful ice house and then i made a different like world that i called claudite um after what? Claude, Why? because he he named his world abini and got offended i didn't name my world after him so i named it claudite and it's a little tropical like um, jungly world so I made this like cute little log cabin by this river and I made a stone bridge that like connected two islands together and That's that took cool. fucking ages when you're not yeah. on creative mode I had to keep creating things to stand on to make this bridge that would like oh, arc yeah, over yeah. the ocean real pretty shit and then I had another world where I was just cave exploring like I went a bit wild mm. and like I set up a series of like walkways down in this deep fucking cave because you know how there's that like that it's a thing that they're testing out that they haven't finished yet called Caves and Cliffs. Yes. I turned on the Caves and Cliffs and I found this like incredible cave near my house. They're very common. And um, I just went wild exploring the cave. Yeah. So those are my worlds. That's my Minecraft update. Baby. Minecraft update. Okay. Wow. I am. Claude has got me onto this game called The Witness, which mm-hmm. I'm finding incredibly fun. And it's just a series of puzzles, but they're so like, I think you'll love it, Michelle. Yeah. you love puzzles. I love puzzles. You fucking love puzzles. And it's just this like game that really rewards you for figuring out these things slowly in your own time. And like, they give you all the tools and resources you need to figure out everything. And like, mm-hmm. they use like the environment around you. And like, there's just That's like cool. hints everywhere. So you really need to like, I feel like you enter this world because it's all set on an island and all of the puzzles are on these like little squares. So it's like patterns that you're doing. Okay. And um, the patterns are influenced by the things that you can see around you. And like, yeah, mm-hmm. all the hints are like layered into the island. Mm-hmm. And the more skills and tools you pick up through puzzles, you can do other puzzles. So you encounter some puzzles and you just can't do it and you have to come back to it because you haven't learned that skill yet, but they will teach you somewhere. Okay. So it's just so much fun. Like, it's not the kind of game where you figure it out and you're like, well, that was fucking dumb. Like, how could I ever have figured that out? It's like yeah. when you figure it out, you're like, oh my God, of course it was there the entire time. I and it's, it makes you feel really feeling. smart. I yeah, love it, like, that feeling. Yeah, I think you'll love it. Like, now I'm obsessed. I think you should play The Witness and we should get a Michelle's Witness update corner. Oh, okay. I like that. Yeah, maybe maybe when I eventually inevitably get paid at some point this year, I'll buy oh, The Witness. Oh, you don't want to use the, the $900 in cash <laughs> that you got? <laughs> well, I, if Sony starts letting me give them cash direct, <laughs> I'll mail them an envelope <laughs> with $50 yeah. in it saying, can I play The Witness, please? <laughs> And they're like, this woman is clearly a drug dealer. She's clearly <laughs> laundering money. Idea that I would be laundering my drug money by buying PS4 games is you would. crazy. You would. <laughs> That's you'd not go what into drugs laundering simply money to... is, though. No, no. But you would simply, you would become a dealer just so you could buy sweet video games with your yeah, money. I would. I would. And so that I could expa- expand my hard pivot back to physical media. Well, speaking of something that I wasn't sad to see go, we nice. watched College Road Trip. With Raven Simone and Martin Lawrence. Look, last year we started with Sex in the City 2, the movie that famously <laughs> broke you, right? It so did. I think it this did. is not so bad. <laughs> Sex in the City 2 was like really low. Zoolander 4, Zoolander Sex and the City 2, fuck. Zoolander 2 was really tough for me. Yeah. Sex and the City 2 was really tough for me. This wasn't too bad. This wasn't so bad. I think this this movie, it's a great way to start the year in some ways in that it, it, it encapsulates the specificity of this list because something like Sex and the City 2, yeah, that could be on any bad movie podcast, you know? 
anyone talking about ma- bad movies would eventually get to Ultraviolet or The Island of Dr. Moreau. But College Road Trip barely belongs to be on this list. But we're going to talk <laughs> about it, even though we don't want or need to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, this was a bit of a nothing bad film in that it wasn't, like, it was almost good enough for me to actually just be able to sit through it comfortably and be like, cool, I'll never watch that again. So it wasn't bad enough to warrant being here, but it still wasn't good enough to, I guess, <laughs> obviously not be on this fucking list. It was a Disney Channel original movie with a better cinematographer. That's it. Yeah, 100%. But to be honest, like, it's hard to hate this film because I, I think that Raven Simone is a talented comedic actress. I think she is too. Like, I think that, like, That's So Raven, like, growing up watching mm. that, like, she was hilarious. And I remember, like, every time I'd go to my grandma's house because she had Foxtel, I would, like, single out the episodes of That's So Raven because I was like, I have to watch this. I never get to watch this. So I can't sit there hating it because I'm like, oh, this is just, like, it seems almost nostalgic just watching Raven Simone in anything. But I do think if we're mentioning that like, hey, Raven Simone is a talented comedic actress, you wouldn't get that from this movie because this movie refuses to give her almost any comedic lines. It really Pretty bothered much. me the whole time. She's just like, Daddy, I just want to go to college. I just want to be a lawyer at Georgetown. Why would you get Raven Simone and then have her like not play a character who is anything there's no yeah. definable qualities whatsoever about her character what's it, what's even her name i have no idea i don't remember amanda melanie M- melanie melanie whatever melanie porter melanie get out of here <laughs> <laughs> yeah look she wasn't the only bits that she actually got to shine comedically in like the skydiving scene where like they realize yes. that they're on a skydiving plane oh. not a normal plane oh we'll come that back to like, that <laughs> I'll, I'll just admit i thought that scene was kind of funny i was me, like me when they when the when it when it opens behind them and they realize that they're meant to skydive out of the plane instead of get landing safely in DC, I was like, this is fun. This is yeah. like probably the best bit of the film. Oh, I'm 100% going to bring it up again because I thought it was fun as well. Oh, good. I <laughs> thought like them screaming and realizing what they had to do and then just like suddenly being in the suits and still screaming. I'm like, this is like the best time I'm having in this entire film. It is easy to hate on this movie at the very least. Like rather than despite Raven Simone, I would say because Martin Lawrence, who is yet again playing a cop and yet again in this movie, I don't know what his deal is. What's with Martin Lawrence, man? He's yeah. not funny. Yeah. He's not a funny so guy. So Martin Lawrence, we, this is the second time he's come up for us yes. because he was in Big Mama's House. Was it three that we watched? Yeah, was Big Mama's House one? three. Well, it wasn't House. It was Big Mama. Like Father, Big Like Mama? Son, I think. Oh, Christ. I think I've just tried to completely erase it from my memory for good reason. Yeah, There's only fair. so much my brain can store. Why would I store Big Mama three? <laughs> you know, it's flicked out into, into oblivion. But um, I don't think he's very funny either. I don't think he's very likable. And I feel like his character as this possessive dad is hard to relate to just because yes. I like the theme of it being about a dad that needs to let go of his little girl. But I don't like watching men controlling their daughters. Like I find yes. that really fucking frustrating. And I feel like the fact that he learned that by 17 – is fucking annoying <laughs> like, b- by her being 17. She's not like a wayward youth, right? That's what she's fucked a me up about girl. this movie. She's good. She, like, this is not a movie about like, oh man, she they have a fraught relationship because she's punk and he's he's hunk. I don't know. He's whatever. He's a cop and she's uh, playing hooky or whatever, right? It's not that. She's like a good student who wants to be a lawyer at Georgetown D- in, in D.C. Like, yeah. what, what's your deal man he's so controlling there's literally a bit where she's just gonna drink coffee and he tips all the beans into a bin he's like you're not allowed to drink that coffee is a drug i was like and like the way he says it to her like doesn't even talk it through with her he just tips it out in front of her i was like if my dad did that i would go livid i would go insane i will say it was very like well written in terms of the fact that it's very cop behavior to come to the conclusion that coffee is also a drug but manifest that as thus we should ban coffee and not maybe some of our drug laws are a little overkill. I refuse to believe that there's any cop that doesn't drink coffee because according to American, you know, film tropes, they're all sipping away at coffee and they're eating the little donuts in the cars. That's what I've learned. Mm. This film's trying to sell me that that's not the fucking truth. I don't know. Maybe he's not in the the coffee drink and donut sipping club. Maybe he's in the... For all we know, maybe he goes around and he arrests mothers who have like half an ounce of weed. (sighs) We're getting dark here. (laughs) (laughs) It's a movie about a cop and I don't like him. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I'll give you the overview. 
this film came out in 2008. So that was like a fair amount of time after That's So Raven, right? Or probably not that long. But like, when did That's So Raven end? I feel like those Disney Channel shows were like, they feel like they're on air for eight years and then you find out that they had two seasons. Well, yeah, this was... This only went for four years. That's so Raven only went for four years. That's I quite that. short. That's really short. I thought it was like an institution. I thought it went for like yeah. a decade. So That's So Raven went from 2003 to 2007. This came out in 2008. Raven Simone at this time was like 23, actually. So like wow. a fucking grown adult woman. And it was written, it was directed by Roger Cumble. And Roger Cumble did a bunch Wait, of like... Cumble or Cumble? <laughs> what do you wish it was? Cumble, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Cumble. Like uh, K-U-M-B-L-E, but it'd be far more fun if it was the latter. You I little cumball like that you. <laughs> That's what Claude says every <laughs> morning. He's like, Good morning, oh. my little cumball. No, I don't it, it I'm like, totally oh, good morning, Claudine. Uh, Claudine. Yuck. I'm a wee cumball. It tonal, the um, tonal difference of it being that your fiancé calls you a cumball in the morning, it, that's terrible. Well, who else is going to call me a cumball, all right? I'm faithful to my man. <laughs> they don't have to be providing cum for you to be a cumball. It's just your general essence is a ball of cum. Oh, that's nice. I yeah. really give off cumball energy. You give off real cummy energy and you're yeah. a total ball. You're the ball. <laughs> You're the ball, man. <laughs> um, Roger Cumble, he like directed things like Just Friends with like Ryan Reynolds and Amy. Just like Shop five Smart. movies about how they're just friends and then they end up I having know. sex. I, I'm not. A, I can't possibly be expected to remember all of them. <laughs> This is true. You think you have things like no strings attached and stuff like that? Uh, yeah, but friends with benefits or something. I don't yeah. Know. We know each Just other. Just Friends was like 2005, I think, and it was like about this guy coming home and this girl that was his friend. It was, I don't even want to get into it. And no, he I know the plot. Intentions. Oh, oh <laughs> he had cruel intent. How did you yeah. start with Best Friends and then get to Cruel Intentions? That's wild. <laughs> wow, it's called Just Friends, first of all. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, he did Cruel Intentions 1 and 2. I've never seen Cruel Intentions. What's, like, the vibe? Look, I'm going to be honest right now. I My mom likes that movie, and she showed it to me when I was, like, seven, which is not an appropriate age to watch that movie, nor is it an appropriate age for me to remember that movie. I just remember that Sarah Michelle Gellar is very attractive. Oh, that makes sense. Here's the overview. Melanie Porter is a college-bound girl with an overprotective cop dad called James. Melanie is offered an interview at the prestigious Georgetown University, which is too far from home for her dad's liking. James offers to take her on a road trip to Washington, D.C. himself. They stop at Northwestern, the university that James would like Melanie to go to. He is planted actors, but Melanie doesn't fall for it. The porter's car soon breaks down and they find Melanie's little brother Trey in the trunk with Albert, his pet pig. Later, Melanie, James and Trey manage to hitch a ride on a tour bus where Melanie and James try and work out their differences. Melanie's friends show up and take her to a sorority house. Her father follows but is brutally tased by the owner and arrested. Melanie is upset but they end up forgiving each other at the airport after James realizes he has to let his little girl go. After dropping off Trey, they skydive to make the interview at Georgetown. They make it to the interview just in the nick of time. Melanie gets into Georgetown and her parents wave her a tearful goodbye on her first day. That's the movie. I feel like that's one of those movies reading the plot. Sometimes at the movies on this list, we read out the overview and you can immediately go, oh yeah, that's a weird movie. This is one where you're like, yeah, this doesn't sound like there's anything. Wait, what? Oh, sorry. I must have misheard because this sounds like a perfectly, wait, what? Mm. Like there's so many like these individual episodes that are tonally completely not with the rest of it in that they're quite strange. Yeah. The inclusion of Trey and his pet pig, Albert, Mm. is really odd. There's a whole sequence where, as I mentioned, Melanie, they're staying at a hotel. Melanie wants to drink coffee and her dad's like, that's a drug fucking no and tips it out and the pig gets into the coffee in the bin and goes crazy and there's this little cgi pig flying around oh my god people. the pig fully flying through the air was one of the most wild things i've seen on this list i expect it to be one of my favorite shots of this year <laughs> yeah i remember watching it and claude was looking at the pig being like that's a cgi pig and i was like no that's a real pig because he was just sitting there i was like that's definitely a real pig and then a couple of scenes later it, the pig was flying everywhere and i was like that's definitely a cgi pig that's fucked 
shocked. <laughs> Especially because the, the pig starts flying forward and then we cut to the waiter and the waiter fully saw God. Like, the waiter is like, I am going to die in this moment. <laughs> the pig was an odd inclusion and, like, you just... The the presence of a small, cute animal isn't funny. Like, it's not a, it's not a joke. The gag is that... It's that it's a pig, not a dog, but that's not a gag that goes for a movie. I reckon that gag might actually work in like a TV show because then it's not a gag. It's like a character trait. Mm. Oh, he's the guy with the pig. But in, in the movie, you're like, where's the joke, right? That is a trope in TV shows, like Ross and his monkey. Yeah. He's got a pet monkey. He that's has a crazy. pet that is not a cat or dog, it's not a standard yeah. unit of pet. How many standard That's... deviations away from pet is this animal? That's so true. I feel like TV shows always have that trope. And it works in a TV show because it's like a season's arc of like, I own a monkey now. Oh, never mind. Had to get the monkey euthanized. Whoa. <laughs> That's the arc? Yeah, I don't, monkey I don't, went hey, wild. Abby, I support your work so much. I don't know if I'm going to watch your show. <laughs> Monkeys are crazy, man. I made the mistake the other day of reading about Nim the Chimp and my life has never been the same. Have you heard about Nim the Chimp? I feel like I don't want to on our comedy podcast <laughs> with that intro <laughs> to <laughs> Nim the Chimp. <laughs> <laughs> can I can I entice you into a, a couple of little little factoids about Nim the Chimp? Okay, you can try, but I withhold the power of editing. Oh no! <laughs> well, I'll break it down for you. Nim the Chimp was like in the sixties or seventies. Oh god, this is gonna be terrible. Yeah, that's a bad start, right? This yeah. this one dude is like. I reckon that if you raised a chimp like a human, it would be able to speak like a human because they can pick up, like chimps have the ability to pick up grammar if they're raised like humans. So to prove this theory, and it was this whole theory was a big fuck you to Noam Chomsky, so they called the chimp Nim Chimsky, um, like genuinely. Why was it a big fuck you to noted professor of linguistics, Noam Chomsky? Because Noam Chomsky believes that you can't teach other species, like they can't pick up grammar and sentence structure the same way, even if they learn, if, even if they're taught how to sign and, and how to say words, that they won't be able to. Like he basically did a thesis saying that like chimps wouldn't be able to do it. So this guy's like, I reckon they could. Why? So he who, selects. Who, who, who is this man? Why does he think he oh, knows I better? Remember. God, I hate He's crazy. This. <laughs> I'll, I'll keep it brief for you <laughs> they select a chimp who's been born just two days ago they euthanize his mother and they take him away oh and my they gosh. give him to a family living in a brownstone Manhattan building did they have to no. <laughs> The woman, her name is Stephanie. She has a husband called Weir, and they have seven kids. And Nim is the what? eighth child. Yeah, no, he's and like not. they bring it, <laughs> they bring him into the house. They put a fucking nappy on him. He's no, one of the kids. No, and they the shouldn't. <laughs> and Don't the mother, <laughs> the mother loved Nim so I, much. I doubt it. She adored him. I doubt it. And the whole idea was that she was going to teach him how to sign and how to communicate. So but she was kind of like, eh. <laughs> fuck that. I don't need to give this chimp any boundaries. I love him so much. So That's Nim goes terrible. fucking wild. He yeah, doesn't learn sign language. It's, it's so foreseeable. <laughs> if it, she gives, she starts like she wants to just hang out with Nim. So like she lets him like drink alcohol and smoke weed with her. He's this like a not baby chimp. You treat a child. So you're she lets, fucking experiment as it is goes terrible. through puberty, it starts like touching her body and she loves oh, it. And like Christ. she like watches it masturbate. It's fucked. Holy and, shit. Like, Nim loves her, but he hates the dad, Weir. So when Weir tries to like be affectionate to Stephanie, Nim like bites him and dro- draws blood because chimps have oh proper like fucking Yeah, because they're a wild animal. Yeah. In your fucking home. The scientist that started the experiment was basically like, well, this isn't going very well because Nim can't sign at all. He keeps getting yeah. high. <laughs> of course. Um, yeah, of He's course he can. He's 18 months old. Um, I need to remove him. So they remove Nim and they actually start sign language lessons with proper teachers but nim is getting bigger and more and more aggressive and to like be able to teach nim you have to like make him respect you which means that you have to attack him before he can attack you oh my god Um, so to be his teacher you have to like bite him on the ear or something and he'll be like sick we're cool like i respect you you're just the shit out of a monkey to try and force (laughs) it to evolve (laughs) don't do that and they thought they were making progress with nim until one day the guy that was doing the experiment realized that Nim wasn't learning signs. He was just mimicking signs for treats. And so yeah, like, he couldn't really put together obviously. a sentence. A lot of the scientists, a lot of the teachers were claiming like he's making leaps and bounds. Like they claim that he made this really long sentence, but the sentence is something like Nim eat orange, Nim give orange me, you eat orange with Nim. Like that's like the long sentence that he ap- apparently signed. Oh my God. And the scientist was like, this whole experiment's been a bust. So they put Nim back to the zoo, but Nim had a fucking freak out because he'd never been in a zoo, never seen another yeah, chimp. Of course. Why he would you really just depressed. put it straight into the zoo? Zero. that's terrible and then he was sold off to a lab for ex- 
experiments. Have any then... of these people ever <laughs> in, interacted with a monkey even once? Done maybe light reading on a monkey ever before. <laughs> <laughs> and then they put them onto a farm, but it wasn't like a farm for chimps. It was a farm for Why? like horses and deer. Why so would you just put one the monkey on a farm? Roaming around a farm. Monkeys are not farm animals. What's going on? <laughs> In in the end, Nim died at 25 when most chimps die from like 50 onwards. So Nim had a terrible life. And um, anyway, it made me think of that. Wow, that's great. (laughs) Um, Yeah, a college road trip was. um... It's a hell of a lot more interesting than this podcast, like than this film. So were you about to say than this podcast? (laughs) No, no, no. I mean, on the note of completely abusing an animal, this pig running up to the suckling pig, it, like I feel like it's self-actualized. That is the same as trying to teach Nim the monkey sign language. Like, <laughs> forcefully evolving an animal. <laughs> oh, God, this film was just... It was awful. Like, I, I, it wasn't too bad. Like, I feel like this is preempting my own rating. But this film was fine to sit through. And, and look, what I did like about it, what I will say that I liked about it is that it was a really nice depiction of like a modern African-American family where like the girls going off to college, like there's no like that. It's not like they're like really like lingering on any like stereotypes. They're just like, you know, they're just like a modern family in America. It was clearly like made by I, actually it wasn't made by it was made by a white man, but like it feels like it's like a good insight into like an african-american family like a modern african-american family yeah it's it's that it's that thing that i think american like mass cinema really struggles with of like it doesn't engage in stereotypes but also the way that it doesn't engage in stereotypes is by going this black family is just like a white family which is not this is true not a, a uh necessarily bad thing but is maybe like not representing specific struggles. Like if I saw a trans woman in a movie who was like portrayed as just like anyone else, I'm like, that's great. But also you can't remove all of Mm. what makes her trans and then expect me to be happy with it. Very true. I mean, like I feel like more than anything, it's not even just that they're like a white family. It's like, they're just like a middle class to upper class family. Like they've clearly got a lot of money. They have a really nice house and a really nice neighborhood which is shocking because their dad's just a cop. Like that doesn't pull in a lot of money, to and be he's honest. A, and he's I don't a even police know what... captain, at least. Oh, he's a police captain. Even then, I don't think captains are. I, I don't feel like the police are paid very well. In Surely America. they have to be paid at least okay. Otherwise, like, why are we let them get away with any, everything if they're getting paid badly? <laughs> what, what is this? The average salary for a police captain is eighty one thousand dollars. That's pretty good, according to PayScale dot com research USS. It's pretty US, good. It's not, it's, not out, it's not outrageous, but like. Yeah, that's a middle class, upper middle class family. Well, hey, $81,000 in US dollars is probably a lot more. Let's have a look. In AU dollars, that would be 112000 Damn. Oh, okay, yeah. And also, I guess yeah. American houses are like... The mum was also a real estate agent. Oh, they're yeah, raking true. it in. Their yeah, household they really income's are. like two fifty grand. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. It fucks me up that like property in America is so cheap. Like looking yeah. at like certain, I for some reason I was looking up Texas like compulsively yesterday. I don't know what I was doing there, but I was looking up the differences in like housing costs between different Texas cities. And all of them are like, this neighborhood averages at like $250,000 to a house for a house. And others were like $117,000. And I was like, our fucking real estate, our market is fucked. Like to what? live in Dallas or Houston and Texas, the biggest cities, the median, like like the average amount for some of the better neighborhoods is like one hundred and seventy to two hundred and fifty thousand dollars for a full fucking house. What? Yeah, and here we are with like yeah, like million dollar price tags on dilapidated pieces of shit in the outer suburbs of Sydney and That's, Melbourne. Yeah, yeah. For the perspective of non Australian listeners, uh, housing prices in Sydney and Melbourne are usually like seven hundred thousand to a million for a mediocre to bad home (laughs) yep yep if you want anything decent with a lot of space that's been renovated like it's like an older build yeah you're looking at like one million onwards it's fucking wild it's wild it's as wild as nim should have stayed (laughs) nim it's a a wild animal we don't talk about nim anymore Oh, oh! Now you're pulling the we don't talk about <laughs> Nim card. I'm sorry, I didn't want to like, talk about Nim. Really, I'm really sensitive to it. Like I just don't like to hear about it. Oh, 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 oh. I'm gonna get you for this, Abigail. <laughs> I'm gonna get you. <laughs> what are you gonna do to me, Michelle? Ne- next week, I'm you gonna like. Try me. I'm gonna begin the next episode with a tragic story of a cat or something. I'm gonna get you. 
But oh then I'm going to cut God. it out of the episode, so it's only you that hears it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Earlier today, Claude was saying that he wished he could, like, fry Cassie's fat belly like pork crackling, and I almost wanted to cry. I hate that he said that, and I... <laughs> Stop saying upsetting like, things to me, Abigail. <laughs> <laughs> what other devastating stories can I think of? No! Um... <laughs> Hey, the cast in this movie was crazy. It was weird seeing like Lucas Grabeel, Will Sasso, Pre Vine, Brenda Song Who's is Will? in it. Yeah, Brenda Song's in it. Who's Will Sasso? He was uh, he was the uh, overweight guy who was bald at the beginning. He was pretty famous on Vine for a little bit there. One of his most famous vines, he does something with like shooting lemons out of his mouth. Oh my god, you I remember me Will Sasso. Vines, yeah. Oh my god! He's yes, not holy shit. Great in this. I've seen him in something no, else where he's, he's good, but he's he really you can see like each of the facial marks he has when he's reacting to things, and it, I hate when I can see such distinct like reactions. He was a great presence on Vine because he really he did some surreal shit. Like yeah. he really everything was basically just lemons coming out of various orifices and flooding him, and it was, it was a really good time. It was a simpler time. It was. Simpler Take time. me back to Vine, man. TikTok's corrupting my brain and my soul and my mind and my body and my spirit. I get that. But I just can't get away. I can't, get, can't get, away. get away. Can't get away, baby. TikTok, TikTok. Living that TikTok. Living TikTok, that t- baby. Living that TikTok, baby. Hey, we're down to you live on TikTok. I mean, <laughs> I guess you... What the fuck? <laughs> that came from deep in my fuck. belly. Is this what this year is going to be? <laughs> yeah. That was a solid belch to start 2022. That, you are yeah. welcome, listeners. Welcome to the new year. The belches are bigger than ever, and the movies are worse than ever. I mean, that's the that's the concept of the podcast. It's just going to keep I wish worse. you used almost any word other than solid to describe that belch. <laughs> <laughs> they were definitely... Some, you know, don't, solid don't, parts coming don't. out of my <laughs> my body. God. Hey, I ate corn fritters the other day and I saw corn in the toilet bowl, like full corn. No one prepares you for that. It's because the walls of individual corn kernels are made of cellulose, so your body can't oh, process it. Of course you it. fucking know this, show. Yeah, and I, I learn about it on my own time. I'm proud of it. <laughs> Not in the knee. <laughs> I was going to tell you, our listenership has gone up, right? And now we're <laughs> serving them this for the new year. I'm still just laying out some absolutely heinous facts on you. Okay. Corn fully came out of my butt and Nim the Chimp got abused. I will say, back to College Road Trip, the, the whole like pivot to going to see Northwestern, which I can't believe in America you can just have a university named after a direction that's not even the direction in the state that it's in. That's so American to me, to be honest. That seems like a... You know what? We talked about TV show tropes. That's a real American trope going on here. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I went to University of New South Wales. Oh, yeah, I went to East Western out in fucking um, Pumbara or something. That fucks me up. Every state has a north, east, south, and west. How fucking yeah. dare you? Is it direction relative to the whole country? Doesn't that depend where you are in the country? Are you talking about from the center or from the center when there were 13 colonies? <laughs> What's your deal, man? Yeah, from which direction is it northwest? Which... I under- <laughs> Certainly from the southeast it is. Okay, well, that makes sense. <laughs> well, you answered that for me. <laughs> you really set that up so easily. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a fucking idiot. But when they're at Northwestern, the whole like, oh, the dad has sent someone who is actually just trying to pump up how cool Northwestern is, you know, that's kind of played out. But that like it ending in almost everyone that they're encountering is actually a, a friend or colleague of... Mm. Uh, Martin Lawrence, and then they all like disperse at once. That was funny. I thought that was funny. Genuine. Mm. Hey, little little. Yeah, that's the thing about this film. There is just a couple of genuine moments where you're like, "That's sweet." And again, I like the theme of like a parent having to let their child go and Mm. learning how to like have to like you know trust their kids to make the right decisions. That's a good theme. Another thing I thought was funny. I think two things on different sides of the spectrum. One is when the little boy. What was his name again? Travis? Trey. Trey. When Trey mm-hmm. is trying to explain the pig to the dad, like in the midpoint, he he, he goes like, yes, as Sing Ming Fred once said, and I was like, him saying Sing Min Fred instead of Sigmund Freud, I 
really that's tickled funny. me. That is fun. Yeah, that's that's fun. On the other hand, when they get on the karaoke bus and then she fully starts singing a pop song <laughs> called the Double Dutch Bus, which doesn't mean anything. I literally wrote down in my notes, <laughs> did I die? Is this what I see before I die? <laughs> I remember vividly disassociating during that scene because I was like sitting on the couch, slumped there watching it. And I like my mind just drifted away while she was singing. I was like, what the fuck's going on? I drifted away and it came back to her like sitting down, him being like, I can't believe you remember all the words. And she's like, of course I do. Like, and I was like, what the fuck just happened? Which I didn't understand. Did they write the song? Is it a song? I Also, I hate, what, what is it? So many American movies are like, oh yes, we'll have to have a scene in which a bunch of uh, East Asian, if not Chinese people are singing karaoke. And the joke is that they speak English in a very garbled way. Weird gag. And weird gag that they're then the backup singers to the double Dutch bus song, which mostly features them going bomb, bomb, but um, bomb, 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 but um, bomb. The whole song is like a template for a song, right? Like it's, it's <laughs> if you're teaching a class on how to write a song, this is like the template you would give. Oh, you have a melody like this, and then it's the double Dutch bus. Ooh, boo, bop. Double Dutch bus doesn't mean anything. Isn't double Dutch an American j- jump rope thing? You skip rope and do double Dutch. Do, do we do that in Australia? I didn't have friends, so I wouldn't know. I think it's a group activity. Double Dutch is a slang term, which means unintelligible or garbled speech or language. So it's gibberish bus. Yeah, and I'm just wondering if it's because they're Asian. And that's like a fucked thing. Oh, Jesus. We can't. Because you literally just said there's a trope of, like, you know, a tour bus full of Asian people speaking garbled English, and this literally means garbled a garbled speech i can't I, I, we we gotta we gotta we gotta run away from this this is too much <laughs> i think you've uncovered something a bit too deep <laughs> no. about this film do you want do you want to hear some no. trivia <laughs> oh yes please trivia? yeah okay great okay <laughs> uh believe it or not this is a common trend with our films but there wasn't that much interesting information to dig oh, up about Christ. college road trip the format of our podcast is breaking at the seams. <laughs> it is, but I'm hoping that as they get worse and worse, there's more trivia to dig into. You I know? think it's the uneven. I'm excited for the films to get worse. Ghost Rider had an unbelievable amount of trivia, and then this has mm. like nothing. Yeah, I'm. I yeah. too am excited. Like, guys, everyone who's here right now, I'm so glad you're with us. But I'm. I'm telling you right now, really, I'm in it for when it gets to 150. Bare exactly. Minimum. That's the real exactly. start. <laughs> I honestly feel like we're still wading through the films that are like mediumly bad, but I'm really excited to get to the properly like fucking really, really bad we'll, shit. We'll get to, should, we, we should get to 150 this year. This is 175. Yeah. We'll get Fuck, there this year. We're not year. far off. This we'll is be it. there in the middle of the month, uh, in the middle of the year. Yeah. On our two yeah. year anniversary. That's beautiful. What wow. will we do to celebrate? Probably release an episode. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trivia. Here is my first piece of trivia. Eleven pigs played Albert. <laughs> That's more pigs than I expected. I, I don't know. There's, I know that sometimes... There's a lot of pigs. I, a I lot know of that, pigs. like, babies are often played by twins so that you can sort of circumvent child labor laws without quite circumventing them. You go, like, are there two different children? But mm. 11 is a lot of pigs. <laughs> yeah, what happened to the first 10? What was wrong with them? <laughs> oh, I figured that they each had like a special skills and they were going to, they were like a Captain Planet thing where we needed all of their powers combined to create the one pig. But I like your thing that they just churned through a lot of pigs. This is another Nim the Chimp situation, man. This is. <laughs> and here is my second piece of trivia. This is Martin Lawrence's first G rated film. That That's surprises all I me because. All of his films feel like they couldn't possibly offend anyone because they are bland nothings. It surprises me that anyone is at all really familiar with his filmography, <laughs> as if someone has sought out Martin yeah, Lawrence films to watch. Fair. That, to me, is surprising. Well, maybe that's not even true. It's just who's going to go check? Yeah, maybe it's just a false claim. <laughs> who's going to check? No are you going to check? I'm not, not. <laughs> I'm not going to check that shit. No. <laughs> not well, at I'm going to double check all of his movies. That would take at least 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. It's not gonna happen. No, you're not gonna. Your time is worth way more than that, Michelle. And you keep that in mind, oh, all right? No, no, it's not. But uh, thank you well, for the sentiment. Yeah, that's no. You make a good point. We are doing this podcast. Hey, no, no, no. My time's worth more than that. Hey, come on. Hey, no. <laughs> keep it up, Michelle Sinclair. Would you like to hear some reviews? I would love to. Reviews. I want to say right now. 
as we head into this new year. I just want it to be known. The reviews, one of my favorite segments. I love it. Yeah. I love doing it. I love the reviews. We all love the reviews. This film had 12% on Rotten Tomatoes. The website's critical consensus reads, filled with shrill gags and middling slapstick, College Road Trip is woefully short on comic imagination. Yeah. Here is a review left by Nathan Rabin of the AV Club. I feel like I've done, I've read out some of his reviews before, to be honest. These names tend to, yeah, they they start to ring a bell. You know Nathan personally? Oh, yeah. Shout out to Nate. Love that guy. Great guy. guy. Just saw him last week. Oh, really man. Really great patio. Woo, great. Makes an awesome barbecue. Great patio. He is not COVID safe, though. His whole house just <laughs> fucking breezing in. Yeah, he's anti-vax, right? Oh, no. Oh, we wouldn't go to his house if that wasn't the case. <laughs> <laughs> Martin Lawrence's long, sad devolution from the poor man's young Eddie Murphy to the poor man's late Eddie Murphy continues. <laughs> Sorry, the poor man's late period Eddie Murphy oh, continues. That's brilliant. amazing. Brutal and perfect. Also, devolution. He is Nim the Chimp. Oh, my God. Every, I'm really glad that you're seeing the parallels that I was trying to strike up no, between I Nim get the it. Chimp and this film. I was hard against telling the tragic story of a show animal in our comedy podcast. Now I'm really into it. <laughs> <laughs> the Sun UK didn't get the reviewer's name, unfortunately. Couldn't find it. But this is a review from the Sun UK. Children might find the slapstick routines amusing, but for older viewers, this is a mirthless voyage. Wow. I mean, mirthless it's the voyage, sun. those are strong words. Yeah, mirthless voyage is excellent in the middle of yeah. what I'm sure was a worse written review than that line. Yeah. Here is a review left in 2008 from Rajiv Krishnank 20. Okay. Neat. 10 out of 10 review. And this, the title of it is Good Movie, Watch It. Those of you who have rated this movie low, seriously, meet your psychiatrist. You certainly have a problem with your humor gene. It is a cool movie. I love my humor gene. Yeah. Overprotective parents is a majority phenomenon. In other words, a large portion of the planet Earth has overprotective parents. And this is a good, non-exaggerative portrayal of such a phenomenon. In my hood... All my neighbors were like this, and even my parents had some elements of overprotectiveness. I was embarrassed by it on a number of occasions, but I certainly do cherish those memories of overprotection, though I do not endorse it. People just lighten up. It is a movie that every college aspirant asper, aspirant, and every parent of a college aspirant should watch. Those who are out of college would probably enjoy it too. 10 out of 10. <laughs> well, that's a pretty wide net you're casting. <laughs> You certainly have a problem with your humor gene, Michelle, if you I do love, not like this very cool movie. Most people refer to a funny bone. I like that for this guy, it's genetic. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a whole strand down. of DNA, baby. <laughs> but you can just go to a psychiatrist about your genes. <laughs> you should meet your psychiatrist. Yeah. I'm not going to have a session with them. I'm just going to meet them for coffee or something, talk about my funny mm-hmm. gene. My human gene, sorry. I do feel like with my therapist, every time I arrive, I feel like I have to ask her how she's been. I'm like, this is all going to be about me. So I feel like I really need to like check out your going as well. And I'm like, I don't have to do that. This isn't a give and take. Like This this should be a give and take relationship because I'm paying for it. But I feel uncomfortable just walking in and making it all about me. So I have to check in with her. It's so I weird. totally get that impulse, but I can't even begin to process it because I'm just so like pleased how much I get to now nowadays hear you say the sentence, my therapist. I'm Aww. like, oh, I love it. I love it for you it's, so much. It's good shit. Chris got 4854815 left this review in 2021. That's what Chris got. <laughs> <laughs> we called Perfect Film and they gave it a 10 out of 10. That's a good score for a perfect film. I watch this whenever I'm sad. Great acting, especially from the skydivers. And Tarantino should take notes for his final film. What? 10 out of 10. What? His final film, that's ominous. That's a threat. That is, yeah, that review was a it's an threat. Act of violence. It was a prophecy of doom is that Tarantino's final film is upcoming and going to be inspired by College Road Trip. Tarantino should A, take notes and get ready for his final film. Is what this person is saying. There is no way that Tarantino would make this film without putting the N word in it at least twenty times. Let's and be someone getting blown second. off their feet by a gun yeah. for sure. And some Australian blonde woman with her feet on some like car dash. It's got to happen. Yeah. We need a feet shot. We need a sexy woman getting killed. 
Yeah, but give me them feet. Am I right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let me just look at Margot Robbie's feet one more time. I was going to say we all got them. That's not true. We don't all got feet. Some people don't have feet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Some of us got them. Some of us got them. <laughs> um, <laughs> so feet. Some of us got them. That's our new poster. <laughs> We've got... It's it, it it's stuck up alongside got milk with a question mark. <laughs> feet. Some no, it's of us too got much em. milk. Thank you. Too much milk. Yeah. Feet. Some of us got them. <laughs> feet. Some of us got them. Hey. Hey. Have you ever been thinking like, what's our stance on feet, right? I know this is what the listeners at home have been thinking of. What do they think about feet? Are they pro? Yeah, I, was, I was thinking about this this morning, but I was like, I woke yeah. up and I was like, yeah, some of us got them. Some of us got them. I think they're some pretty good. Clearly, they're not necessary because some of us don't got them, and they're fine. Some and of us got them. Absolutely fine. Yeah, unless they're not fine. In which case, my condolences. You know what? I, you know, Just I'm, get rid I think of I'm it. getting into murky territory here. You know? No, that's my stance. Your, f- your feet aren't great. Get rid of them. Who needs them? <laughs> <laughs> You're better without. I'm getting them. rid of my feet in solidarity with, with those who don't have feet. I, my stance is that we should all get rid of our feet. I'm going to do some very white liberal activism, and I'm going to get rid of my feet. Until everyone can get married, okay? I'm I'm gonna do some real like keyboard warrior. Like I'm gonna go real social on this one and just post an Instagram foot of like a post like an Instagram picture of a foot with a black background and then just post that. It's oh, you mean on it's annual in black and white? Day. Yeah, yeah, it's in yeah, black yeah. and white, and it's just like the silhouette of a foot. And I'm like, I stand. Well, I don't him. stand. I sit in solidarity. <laughs> I call in solidarity. <laughs> Great That's my adjustment. activism. Great and then adjustment. when people ask me what I really think about it or what I've done, I'm like, what? I posted a picture. Yeah, you got to say back. I clearly no, care. <laughs> what have you really done? You're like, some of us got them. Yeah, some of us got them, man. Some of us got them. <laughs> if you're ever describing to your friends what rating descending is like, just say feet. Some of us got them. If you're ever trying to describe rating descending, just show them this segment and then they'll be like, I'm not listening to this ever again. <laughs> so please <laughs> show them a, a different segment. <laughs> <laughs> Michelle, that was their review of College Road Trip. What was yours? Look, the first half of this movie, I was like, this movie is not really much of anything in the sense that it's not so bad. It's the kind of movie that you put on and it it exits your brain. If you go like, I have 90 minutes that I wish I didn't have, this is fine, right? You're not going to really remember much of it. Although one thing I will remember is the genuinely fun energy that you brought up at the beginning of the skydiving. The gag is well constructed. Also, the very cheery energy of the guy who just keeps being like, yeah, come aboard our skydiving thing. And then when they're confused, they're also not prepared. Everyone else is fully prepared for skydiving. And then they clearly don't get it. And he's like, wrong kind of diving. And then gets ready to jump out the plane. Once they jump out, he looks out and says, now that's a great dad. If the rest of the movie was like that, I would have given it a six and a half because that's kind of fun and funny. The problem is is that most of it is way too interested in being about how this very nice young woman is not young and nice enough. So I don't know. Yeah, I think, you know what? I think IMDb, you guys nailed it. It's a 4.6 out of 10. It's a 4.4, right? It, You know, whatever. To be honest, I fucking agree with that. I feel like I didn't have a shocking time. Mm. And not that I would ever watch this film again, but I could sit through it very comfortably. Raven Simone is charming. Yeah. And there was one or two bits that genuinely made me laugh. So for that reason, that is like a huge, that's pretty massive for this this list of films that we've gone through. It's actually genuinely made me laugh. I think I'm going to have to give it probably close to you. Like, I think I'll give it like a solid 4.2 out of 10. Yeah, two maybe. It's probably yeah. worth mentioning that at least one of those four is just getting to see Kim Whitley's gorgeous face. She's a beautiful, beautiful Kim person Whitley? to see. The mum. Oh, okay. What else is she in? She's in. She's in a bunch of other things that are mostly like this. She's nice, fine, but she's beautiful, and I like seeing her smile. Oh, that's lovely. On that pleasant note, Michelle, that was college road trip. Don't forget to follow us on social media. You know this spiel. Or you can find us on Twitter under Rate Descend Pot. You can find us on TikTok under Rating Descending. Or you can email us at ratingdescending at gmail.com. Or 
You could find us at our own social medias, if you so please. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at michelle.stclair. And me on Instagram under Abigail J. Ward. Or, you know, you could also, in addition to doing those things, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. Or if there is another review mechanism that you're aware of in your own uh, uh, podcast catching app, Review us there. Rate us favorably. Yeah. R- write a letter to your local MP today. Guys, go out of your way to make us feel nice, uh, even please. though it's an inconvenience to you. Pretty please. We beg of you. We're so sweet. Yeah. And I'll go, oh, thanks. And isn't that really yeah. what we do anything for? And, and and I'll go, I'm a little combo. Please give me with you. Go I'm so, a little ball of cum. Yeah. D- depending on what you're into uh, is who you're going to tell that you, <laughs> you gave us a good review. <laughs> Michelle, what are we going to watch next week? Next week, we're watching Cabin Fever 2 Spring Fever. Oh, is that the sequel to the Eli Roth Cabin Fever? Yes, it is. Oh, wow. I remember the Eli Roth Cabin Fever. That fucking film was wild and weird. Yeah, I'm going to be honest. My desperate little baby who doesn't want to watch gore impulse is rubbing up against my I've seen the scene where the little kid yells pancakes and it's fucking bonkers. And that's from this movie. So I don't know, maybe it'll meet in a uh, happy middle, and next week will be us laughing and crying. Pancakes! 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 The worst yeah. little actor you've ever seen in your life. See you then! See ya! Man.